This is a special video because all these hooplas are related to the sweet baby controversy that we discussed a while ago. One that apparently started Gamergate 2.0. It's official this time. Here we go again. Well, this is getting out of hand. We talk about Sweet Baby a couple of times. It's a video game consulting firm that people avoid because it contributes to some really bad games. This leads to Take This, an organization apparently funded by Homeland Security, taking action against a potential Gamergate 2. Reading through this article is like reading about how to deal with a foreign invader. This defense is politically motivated, and that's when you'll lose. The backlash against Sweet Baby is not political, it's economical and artistic. It's just a matter of not buying the games that Sweet Baby touched on. That's it. Unfortunately, these people don't want to discuss why gamers don't want to buy their games. They just paint gamers as evil for harassing them, even though they organized the harassment first. None of this matters because at the end of the day, gamers still won't buy your games. I feel like that's the best response that anyone should give to these people. Cut out all the politics and all the victimhood. Just tell them, I'm not buying your games. In the grand scheme of this discourse, there seems to be a lot of back and forth between both sides. And while there are lots of arguments being thrown around, there's only one simple action. Don't buy their games. This tweet is quite emblematic of the problem in the current gaming discourse. Yes, don't harass individual game developers and journalists, but that's not why the Steam curator is there. It's just to inform people of the games to avoid. It's okay to respectfully disagree with someone's beliefs. Yeah, tell that to yourself, because you're doing a horrible job at that. This discourse is getting out of hand. These people make it seem as if it's about gamers attacking them personally. There's a lot of political crap flinging from both sides of the argument, and to me, it just derails from the overall point that we should focus on, which is consumer choice. You as gamers have the choice of what games you want to play, and that's not something that these people can enforce on you. They can shame you, mock you, or belittle you, but the money is still in your wallet. So just simply tell them, I'm not buying your games. By saying that, these people will shame you, belittle you, mock you, and even try to make some moral justification for why not buying their game is a terrible thing. Ignore all that and just focus on the action. Don't buy their game. We will still be able to survive in this industry, but some people disagree though. The AAA gaming landscape is collapsing within itself. There are so many layoffs and some are still happening to this day. I genuinely feel bad for the workers. I wish the absolute best for them so that their talents can better be utilized by game companies that actually reward them and not, you know, abuse them. There are many such cases, unfortunately. I don't blame individual developers. I blame the whole company and the horrible management that runs it. I want these companies to treat their workers better. We have plenty of games released already. I don't mind the delays. You get less games and then suffer. That sucks for everyone. Not for me, it's not. I can play old games I haven't played. I can pick up a new hobby. There are so many things in life than AAA games. Stop writing a defense on them, please. You do know that games outside of NA also have diversity consultants, right? You do know that we still won't buy your games, right? Those are all the first couple of hooplas and takes for this video. Before we get to even more of them, this video is brought to you by all these wonderful people. You guys are fantastic. If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below. Just one dollar and you have supported this channel immensely. Seriously, thank you so much. And now, let's talk about the layoffs. Hey gamers, if you say that games are getting more woke, you're paranoid. You're a right winger and you're the reason why corporations would lay people off. Wait, what? Anything to avoid criticizing capitalism. Okay. Kami, this system is not broken because of how it's designed. It's broken because the people running it are greedy scumbags. You said it yourself on this part. Massive institutional corruption, CEOs paying themselves millions. We talk about that all the time. It was nice of you to join in. It was nice of you to join in the conversation of games as a service model. I and everyone else already talk about how garbage Suicide Squad was on the merits of the game itself before we even dive deeper to Sweet Baby. Yeah, compared to game companies being absolute greedy bastards, it can consulting group is a small problem. There are more gamers affected by corporate greed than by politics they don't agree with. Here's the problem. All this politics and name calling doesn't matter. Actions matter a lot more and we are still not buying your games. There are a lot of cases where game developers just shift the blame to the gamers or blame capitalism for their current blight. You can't always blame capitalism for your bad products failing and gamers not buying your games. You just have to admit that your products suck and you suck. 
This person thinks about diversity very differently. Instead of bashing diversity, we should all just make our own games without diversity. We should make an anti-diversity game that has a conservative slant. Somehow this anti-diversity game that popped up in my mind is Life is Strange 2, which is the one game that I would definitely call woke. I imagine that instead of playing as the two Hispanic guys trying to escape the blight of racist America, you play as two white guys wearing MAGA hats. And the game is about their struggles as white guys and how minorities are bad. Yeah, that still sounds like an awful game. Diversity is not the issue. Saints Row, not that one, has some seriously diverse cast. The problem is, the people making diversity way more important than it is, and putting that as a priority over good writing. If you are making it that way, we are simply not gonna buy your games. As far as video games go, we players are getting them good. Let's talk about diversity of these games, because apparently, we are lacking in that area. Take it away, gaming tourist. As a person who advocates for diversity in games, this whole thing is laughable. We have had exactly one female protagonist in the top 25 best-selling games of the last three years. I am so gonna check on that. For reference, here are those best-selling games. Yes, there are more exclusively male protagonists in games than female ones, but games with individual protagonists are trumped by games where you can create or select them. Player choice, the best diversity there is. That's not forced diversity. There is no diversity at all. Considering that most games let you select or create your own character, why would anyone want to beg for more? Because these people don't want diversity. They want to be noticed and have their existence validated. They are absolute narcissists. They don't play games and their opinions shouldn't matter. Yet they do because the gaming industry is dumb. Sorry, I'm still not buying your games. It still boggles my mind why gaming companies would listen to the opinions of these gaming tourists who aren't really that passionate about gaming or don't know much about the hobby. Let's hear more about why they really want diversity in their games, shall we? I don't understand why diversity is a priority for a lot of these people. Anyone consider that games are made by large teams of diverse people, all looking to see themselves in the media we're making. Wow, your team is filled with narcissists. Congratulations. Also, what if DEI isn't an agenda? but a reflection of what's actually happening in the real world outside your window. That's the problem. It shouldn't be. Most people just care about playing good games. We really don't care if the person that we're playing is a reflection of ourselves or not. Only narcissists like you do. Game companies, this is the best time for you to make a statement about your commitment to DEI. I agree. That way people can know which games they shouldn't buy. We will remember the companies that stayed silent when we needed them most. Yeah, what are you going to do, person that limits replies? Blacklist the person or the company? Oh, apparently yes. We still won't buy your games. And finally, this steak here reminds me of a Kitchen Nightmares restaurant owner. I love it when game developers just go full-on mask off to their consumers. Nobody wants your money because no one wants you in the environment. Take it from someone whose job was figuring out ways to get rid of you. Your job is to get rid of gamers? Okay, they meant to get rid of the gamers that are scumbags and harass game developers and journalists. Your side has bad people too. We just didn't ask you to call them out. They exposed themselves. Nobody wants your money. Go spend it on anime porn. I did. Not on anime and games, you can get those for free nowadays. It's the Sony ZV-E10, the most amazing budget camera for beginner videographers and photographers. It supports 4K 30fps recording and coupled with this all-rounder Sony 18-105mm to f.4 lens just makes it better and more versatile. It turns out that picking up a new hobby where I can invest my money on actually useful stuff means less money going to dumbasses like you. Sorry guys, I'm still not buying your games. And that's all for the video today. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out my ABB show channel, link down below. Go subscribe. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.